Okay, let us study about the chapter normal labor. The definition of normal labor is that it is a series of events that take place in the genitalia to expel the products of conception that is the fetus, placenta and membrane through the vagina, uh, out of the uterus through the vagina to the outside world is called as the normal labor. The normal term of this uh, labor um, will be 38 weeks if it is uh, less than 37 weeks it will be called as a preterm uh, labor and, um, and here also the same process will take place but in a miniature form that is it will take place little bit faster here and in a uh, in a shorter interval it will be taking place remember that uh, 38 to 42 weeks of uh, of gestational age during which if uh, delivery occurs or if the labor occurs then it is called as a term pregnancy if it is greater than 42 it is called as post term pregnancy if it is less than 37 it is called as a preterm labor coming to the next thing that is the parturian means patient in labor while the parturition is the process of labor and delivery is not equal to labor delivery is the simply extraction of the uh, fetus from the uterus or also called as the womb and remember that caesareans will be having a delivery without a uh, labor um, but uh, a normal labor will have both the de delivery as well as the labor coming to the criteria of uh, the normal labor also called as a utosia and uh, the spot uh, first thing is that it will be spontaneous in onset second thing is that it will be occurring at term as i've already told it is between 38 to 42 weeks and it will be taking pl place without uh, undue prolongations and there will be vertex presentation or cephalic presentation natural termination uh, of pregnancy will be there with minimal aids no complications to mother or, or to the fetus uh, it will be a single turn uh, pregnancy or single baby which will be having um, a vaginal delivery as well as it will be having a weight of greater than or equal to 2.5 kg so these are some of the important uh, conditions uh, to say that uh, the labor was a normal labor. Dystocia means a normal labor. Any deviation from the above conditions will be uh, will give rise to dystocia. And uh, the date of onset will be calculated using the Nagle's formula, which is by adding the seven days um, and nine months to the uh, last date of. Uh, I mean the date of the last menstrual period coming to the ons causes of the onset of labor and the uterine distension might be one of the cause so there are uh, three important uh, we can divide this causes into three important ones the first is the mechanical cause it can be a neurological cause it can be a biochemical and even endocrine causes are there so let's discuss the first one that is the mechanical cause the mechanical cause like the uterine distension causes myometrial expansion the expansion of the myometrium uh, helps in the establishment of more number of contractile um, contraction uh, associated protein that is CAPs as well as there is uh, more space for the uh, formation of the oxytocin receptors which are responsible for the uterine contractions and uh, there is also increase in the gap junctions also and there is one more important aspect that you uh, very important aspect which i have not mentioned over here is the fetoplacental contribution let me write it over here it is the fetoplacental contribution here uh, the fetus uh, will get uh, uh, the cascade of events will take place to activate the fetal hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis which in turn will act uh, will, will activate the placenta to produce the hormones like the estrogen and prostaglandins and uh, these hormones will uh, further uh, uh, cause the contraction of the uterus for example and the endocrine cause of the uh, onset of labor will be the secretion of the estrogen as well as the progesterone the estrogen causes increase in the oxytocin receptor oxytocin as well as its receptors and uh, due to the, um, uh, uh, even the estrogen can cause increase in the prostaglandin f2 alpha as well as prostaglandin e 
levels um, and uh, it also causes the increase in the actino actomyosin which is a myometrial contractile protein it also increases the excitability of the myometrial cell membranes also and the progesterone level uh, usually decreases uh, because of the increased fetal production of the DHEAS and cortisol which inhibits the conversion of the fetal pregnenolone to uh, progesterone as a result of which the progesterone levels in the uh, will decrease due to this as a um, estrogen level increases while the progesterone level, uh, progesterone level decreases as a result of it there is and uh, due to the fall in the e, uh, ep ratio and there is um, pro prostaglandin production takes place and the, what is the importance of this prostaglandin these prostaglandins are responsible for initiating as well as for maintaining the labor they are uh, responsible for separation or the rupture of the membranes they also cause enhancing enhancement of the gap junctions uh, formation as well as um, they are uh, they help in mechanical stretching during the late pregnancy stages the increased oxytocin receptors uh, will cause increased oxytocin when the oxytocin binds to these receptors it will cause a reflex called as the Ferguson reflex which helps in the contraction and uh, there are also neurological factors which will be um, uh, responsible for the uh, onset of the labor. So let's speak about the uh, contractile system of the myometrium. The false pain or also called as false labor or also called as the spurious labor. This will be taking place at a preterm period. For example, it might be taking place uh, just one to two weeks um, before the before the term in case of primary gravida. And it can be um, a few days um, before itself in case of multi para para women wherein there is a stretching of the uh, due to the stretching of the cervix and the lower uterine segment and irritation in the knee bring ganglia and the uh, mother feels that uh, she uh, she is undergoing the labor but it is actually uh, not it's simply the effacement of cervix that takes place due to uh, for the engagement of the head and it is not uh, truly a labor uh, true labor coming to pre labor pre labor is the period which is 2 to 3 weeks before the true labor and in this period there are three changes the first is the lightning second one will be the cervical changes and fourth will be the false labor pain is also noticed in the pre labor period very important point coming to lightning lightning is a welcome sign uh, wherein it indicates that the head gets engaged and in lightning what happens is that there is um, uh, engagement of the head taking uh, taking place and due to the effacement of the cervix due to the effacement of the cervix that is taking up of the cervical part uh, and um, uh, attaching to the uh, lower uterine segment there is uh, a uh, dilation of the cervix taking place as a result of which the fetal head um, descends down and, and undergoes the engagement as a result of the engagement the uh, pressure and uh, the upward pressure what it was applying uh, through the fundus on the diaphragm will decrease as a result of it diaphragm descends down due to descents, uh, descent of the diaphragm the cardiovascular uh, cardiorespiratory embarrassment uh, will uh, decrease as a result of it the mother feels a sense of relief and further this um, lightning reaction uh, excludes the uh, cephalo pelvic disproportion in the um, and de uh, following delivery and uh, uh, maturation frequency might be uh, uh, still uh, pa painful itself or troublesome itself because still uh, now uh, the engaged head will press upon the urinary bladder cervical changes include softening of the cervix as well as effacement of it and dilation so sed uh, false labor pain as i've already told so these are the simply due to the uh, enlargement of the cervix uh, and um, due to small contractions uh, which were already taking place uh, also called as the blackstone hinge contractions will be there and uh, 
in case of pre labor the braxton hicks con uh, contraction become more and more painful now let us study how to differentiate between the true labor pain as well as the false labor pain true labor pain will be having uh, will be painful uh, uterine contractions at regular intervals uh, which causes hardening uh, during the contraction and softening during the relaxation but it is not so in the case of false labor pain wherein there is no uh, hardening or firmness of the uterus even during the contractions the frequency duration and intensity goes on increasing with the time while uh, this uh, in case of false labor pain it will be remaining just dull and there is show and bag of membrane in the two leg labor pain what do you mean by show it is show is the um, expulsion of the cervical mucus plug as well as the blood is called as the show while the uh, bag of membrane is the dilation of the lower uterine segment and detachment of the uh, membrane uh, uh, fetal membranes from the myometrium as a result of it the membrane containing the liquor amnia hangs down in the cervix called as the bag of waters uh, when uh, the contraction takes place it becomes convex and when there is uh, when there is relaxation uh, this uh, convexity will disappear and that itself is called as the bag of membranes simply it is due to the dilation of the lower uterine segment or effacement of the cervix happens and uh, the um, uh, and uh, it is not relieved by enema enema is the process of uh, giving um, oral uh, or uh, giving a rectal uh, liquid or gas is called as the enema let's study about the mechanism of normal labor the definition of normal labor is the series of movement uh, which the head undergoes in the process of adaptation through uh, when it is uh, traveling through the journey of the maternal pelvis is called as the normal labor uh, remember that uh, the head is the very important part which is going to take the lead here and the fetal trunk is just involved um, in the normal labor or it might initiate some of the steps of the normal labor okay so let's talk about the mechanism of this normal labor in normal labor the head passes the brim usually it will pass through the transverse diameter which will be 9.5 cm uh, the most common position uh, through which it passes is uh, through the left occipital anterior uh, and sometimes even in the case of the in the right occipital anterior position also remember that uh, the ap diameter that is the anterior posterior diameter of the head will be either 9.5 cm if it is passing as the sub occipital uh, bremic diameter or uh, it will or it will be 10 cm if it is sub occipital frontal diameter now let's start with the mechanism of in the mechanism of labor let us study about the steps involved in the mechanism of labor uh, usually the 
occipital lateral position will be the most common one so we'll describe in the uh, the steps involved in this position itself the first is the um the first is the engagement second will be the descent third will be the flexion fourth will be internal rotation fifth will be the crowning sixth will be extension seventh is restitution step and eighth is the external rotation step and finally the ninth step will be the expulsion of the trunk uh, remember that uh, these nine steps are uh, theoretically uh, different but practically some of the steps might undergo uh, simultaneously itself.